So far, we've talked about evolution as these force that can drive populations to adapt to their environment and somehow always selecting for the genes that are better suited to an environment. Yet, um, there are still limits to what evolution can do. And evolution cannot come up with, with genes out of nowhere. Those genes have to be present in the population. So there has to be a genetic variation present from which natural selection can then select which are the genes best suited. If that variation doesn't exist, there is no background for evolution to act. The other thing that can limit evolution is whether a gene has multiple effects. So a gene that has a beneficial effect, but also has a damaging or detrimental effect, it's hard for evolution to select and enhance the beneficial effect without impacting the damaging effect. Epistasis can also limit evolution. Epistasis is when the expression of one gene depends on the expression of another gene. So it is it will be more difficult for selection to favor a certain allele when it has to simultaneously favor the second gene that is affecting the expression of the first one. And finally, the uh, the way selection works is by favoring genes that make the individual more likely to reproduce. And if those genes do not have an effect on reproduction or their effect comes after reproduction, natural selection won't be, won't be able to act on those genes because it can only affect whether the gene gets passed on to the next generation. If the gene acts after it has already been passed on, there is not much natural selection can do. So let's see this example when you have a pleiotropic gene and that gene results is responsible for multiple traits and some of those traits are beneficial and natural selection will increase the expression of that trait but if another trait is, is um, detrimental and you want to decrease the expression of that trait it will be very difficult to separate them because they are both produced by the same gene. So increasing this gene will increase the favorable effect, but it will also increase the damaging effect. While decreasing this gene will decrease the favorable effect and also decrease the damaging effect. When you have a gene with pleiotropic effect, like we talked about sickle cell anemia, it has favorable effects in which if you're a heterozygous for it, you develop resistance to malaria, but if you're homozygous, then you have sickle cell anemia and you have a very low, short lifespan. So those, balancing those two effects is, is also a limit to evolution. Evolution will want to favor the heterozygous, but you cannot favor the heterozygous without having an increase in the homozygous recessive, which is a big problem. Another one, like I said, is the lack of genetic variation. So as as the individuals in the population have lower genetic variation or they're more alike, it will be harder to select for genes as those genes are not present. An example of these are horses. Race horses have been selected for fastness and that was quite successful at the beginning when artificial selection started. But at some point, all the horses, all race horses already have the genes for fastness and there is nothing else to select it from. You, they already have the maximum number of genes that favor the maximum speed. And unless a mutation comes about, there is no more genetic variation to select from. And this can be a big problem for species that are threatened by um, the loss of their habitat and their population numbers declining. So for example, cheetahs, where we have less than 10,000 individuals in the wild because of their habitat destruction, their, such a small population will not have the same genetic variation so that whenever a new challenge comes, like an environmental change, they will be less likely to have individuals with the right set of genes for those new conditions. So that any change that happens in the environment will very likely affect most of the population. Close to home we have a similar example with the Florida panther where we have around 100 individuals living in the wild and their habitat has been hugely 
uh, shrink. So here you see the shade showing what their habitat used to be and now what it remains. So this, the individuals in this population no longer have the genetic variation that they used to have and there are examples of lots of inbreeding bringing lots of increasing the, um, the prevalence of certain mutations. So this is, is a big problem of when we're destroying the habitat of species and we're reducing their population numbers, we are reducing their genetic variation and by that we're reducing their chances of adapting to changes in the environment. And finally, the last limit on evolution is when the genes have an effect after the individual already reproduced. So examples of this are cancer. Cancer affects individuals at their midlife after they've already had children. So if cancer is an inherited, it has a, an inherited component, the, uh, the individual will be affected after it already passed those genes to their offspring. So that there is not much evolution can really do or natural selection can do to take out the genes for or that are responsible for cancer. The same thing happens with Huntington's disease. Huntington's disease is a neurodegenerative disease and it's, it's, a, it's a terrible disease, a terrible condition that devastates families, but it affects individuals after their 40s or 50s, after they already pass on their Huntington gene to their offspring, so that um, those genes have been passed on with no, ef no effect in their fitness, and the effects only come about after the individual has already passed on the genes. So again here is to highlight that natural selection is only acting on genes that have an effect on reproduction. Genes that increase reproductive success will be favorable. Genes that decrease reproductive success will be disfavored. But if the genes have an effect in something else that doesn't lead to reproductive success, then natural selection has their hands tied and cannot really do much.